Hi, this is Mahadeva of ThunderWizard.com and today I want to talk to you about are you a twin flame awaiting reunion with your other half? So bear in mind that the, the idea of twin flame is a very new concept. I mean, I've been on this earth for a while. We didn't talk about twin flames 20 years ago. We talked about soulmates. But now we're talking about twin flames. Uh, there are some things about the twin flame theory that I think there are some misconceptions about, but I want to share with you that I myself definitely have had a twin flame experience, and I can tell you that, that it does exist. Some of the things associated with it I don't think are, actu are, are accurate, but the idea that there is another half of you out there that when you meet that other half you feel it you feel a a connection and a fulfillment you feel as though that something that has been missing with you for your whole life definitely gets fixed and I'm not somebody that ever would have believed this um, I can remember back when I was in my 20s, I can remember actually writing poetry about my other half, and I can't remember the word that I used for her, but it was essentially twin flame. And I could explain to you what she felt like and what, how she would treat me and how we would connect. And I, I just couldn't escape the feeling that she was out there somewhere. I just hadn't met her yet and that we had a connection that surpassed lifetimes. And then I, you know, as I got older, I decided that I didn't believe that, that that was just, you know, fanciful thinking on my part and, um, you know, projection and all that other stuff. And I, and I completely denied that possibility until 25 years later when I was 52. And I remember I was doing online dating and, the, and this woman's picture came up and I just felt this really strong connection. Now that's not unusual, Some, that's happened before. So I didn't really make a big deal out of it, but we ended up connecting. And I was really happy because I remember the feeling I had was, wow, this woman is, is out of my league. She was so beautiful and, and I felt so successful and so conscious and so amazing you know my that was my first impression of her I thought she's out of my league but to my surprise she wanted a second date and on that second date um, it wasn't anything that happened I just remember having the more time that I spent with her in a relaxed environment this feeling came over me of this is it this is the one and I remember at some point during that date, I remember um, my, my head in her lap weeping and I was watching myself shocked, like what is happening with me? Because it was like it was coming out of me. I wasn't choosing to say it, but it was coming out and I was weeping saying, I finally found you. And it was like over many lifetimes, my soul had been searching for her to reunite with her again. And I was, I finally found you. Now, sadly, she passed away. We did end up having, uh, for um, a couple of years, we did end up having a, a relationship that I don't think, I've never seen anybody have what I had, and I'm grateful that, you know, some people go through probably lifetimes and never have what, what we had. And it was, you know, it, and I, I never would have expected this. I'm, listen, I'm a relationship counselor. And I spend a lot of time telling people how to get through the difficulties and work through and compromise. But we didn't have any issues. It was just bliss. And it was, she was, she was, I mean, she was the only being I've ever been connected with who I could, I just knew that my brain and her brain just completely vibrated on the same wavelength and there was absolutely nothing I could say or do that would 
upset her or frighten her, you know, on all kinds of levels, you know, because we all have our little things. And I just knew and it proved to be true. There was nothing I could say or do that would put her in a place of discomfort and vice versa. There was nothing she could say or do that, that you know, that I wouldn't respond positively to. And it was the most freeing experience and the most fulfilling experience. You know, going to sleep with her next to me was, I'm getting emotional thinking about it, it was the most beautiful, fulfilling experience I can remember. And I can remember, you know, every night going to bed with her next to me. And as I fall asleep saying to myself, I have everything I want. I don't need anything else. I have everything. As I said, sadly, she passed away. So I'm open to having that experience again. I'm doubtful that it will ever be on that level. But I'm here to tell you that I do believe that exists. I have experienced it. But I want to address this idea that people are self-diagnosing themselves as being twin flames. They decide they are twin flames and they decide that they are awaiting reunion. Now here's what I think the danger in that is. The danger in that is that if you self-diagnose as a twin flame, you are automatically putting yourself into a state of limitation. Because it's obvious you feel that you want to connect. You want to have that kind of love that is written about, that I've just described, and you feel that you want that. But once you diagnose yourself as a twin flame, then you're limited, and then you'll be alone and lonely until your other half comes to you. And I just want to caution you about that, because Although I have had a twin flame experience, I think it's unhelpful to diagnose yourself as only half a being. Because the twin flame theory as it's being taught, which, which I think part of it is inaccurate, is this idea that there are normal humans and then there are twin flames. And the normal humans have both masculine and, and feminine within them. And so they're looking for another person who has masculine and feminine within them. And the twin flame is one soul that's been split apart into two souls. That's an assumption, and I don't think that's how it works. Because that means that there, you're only half a person. And if you believe the idea that the masculine is the subconscious, you know, as they put it, they're using that word totally wrong, and that the feminine is the conscious, and that the masculine has to become conscious for this twin flame reunion to happen, uh, you know, what you don't realize is that you are self-diagnosing yourself as being half a person. Because if you're only masculine or feminine in nature, it means that you're not fully functional. You wouldn't be able to function in this world. I believe that the twin flame experience is not that some deity, again, you're allowing, you're becoming a complete victim of circumstance. You're allowing this idea to come that something above you, God or the universe or something, has split you in half and that you're only half of a soul and that you're only half of this uh, masculine feminine dynamic. The reality is, is that you would not be able to function just like if you were born with half a body, half a heart, you know, your body, you die. You wouldn't be able to function. I think it's also very cruel of the universe to do that, to split somebody in half like that and then have them go through, you know, have them go through this torturous existence that somehow, you know, the universe has decided you get to be under more duress than anybody else 
Because let's be honest, everybody has that need within them. Everybody has that feeling. You think it's so unique to you that the only way that you can explain it is that I'm different. I'm a twin flame. But everybody has that feeling. So what causes the twin flame experience? What causes the twin flame experience is that over many lifetimes, perhaps hundreds or thousands of lifetimes, there has been another soul who is a full soul that has both masculine and feminine, just like you have masculine and feminine within you. And over multiple lifetimes you have connected and your vibrations have come so close to each other that there is a connection that only you two can have. We used to call that soulmates. But people, you know, as time goes on, people change, you know, terminologies and they want to find another term that will make it more powerful. Soulmate's not enough. Twin flame. I'm only half a person. And then that feeling of only being half a person, which is actually a state of, of being in pain, of feeling you know, like a victim of feeling that the universe has it in for you, because this is where it all starts. Then what you do is you spiritualize that into saying, no, I'm superior to other humans. I'm a twin flame. And our reunion has something to do with the evolution of the universe, as though that's not true for non-twin flame people, as though their reunions of their soulmates is not. Uh, you know, look, point is, is that you've got to get your power back. So I want to suggest to you to drop this idea that the universe made this decision to split you in half, very narcissistic, and that you have to go through your lives feeling this, you know, like you're only half a person walking around, but the rest of everybody else, they're, they're inferior and they have soulmate relationships with, oh, that's okay, but I have a twin flame especially if you've never met your twin flame. I've met my twin flame. I had a relationship with her. I can tell you from experience, I know exactly what it is. A lot of what is talked about in twin flame teaching is accurate. The stuff that's inaccurate is the idea that the universe is so cruel that it's going to target you and split you in half so that you're walking around in many lifetimes with only half of a soul. It's incredibly cruel, incredibly narcissistic, and incredibly egotistical. And very, um, you, know, uh, 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 you know, you're looking down on other people's reality by seeing yourself different from them. It also puts you in a, in a scenario, I'm telling you ahead of time, it's putting you in a scenario to um, sabotage any real relationships that come your way. Because the truth is, is that 99% of all relationships um, demand a lot of work and a lot of compromise. I was lucky, you know, perhaps it was because we only had a short period of time together in this life that maybe I had the ability to just, you know, forget all that and just connect with her. But I, you know, I was lucky. Most people don't have that. So if you haven't had a twin flame experience, and I'm not talking again about the codependent, dysfunctional twin flame experience where you connect and then you rub each other raw and then he runs away and you have to chase after him or, you know, get yourself prepared and he has to awaken. That's just all a bunch of codependent, dysfunctional nonsense. That is not going to happen when you meet your twin flame. Your twin flame will not run away from you. So if you've met somebody who you think is your twin flame because of all the things that psychologists would say, that is just dysfunctional codependence. But you're saying, no, it's my twin flame, and then you get to stay isolated in your pain while he's off married. I mean, I can't believe I see some of the, <laughs> some of the videos I see. What do you do when your twin flame is married? you realize you're in a really codependent, messed up brain space, and you realize that that person's not your twin flame because they wouldn't be with you, then leave you and marry somebody else and have kids with somebody else. That's called codependence, that's called obsession, that's called crazy narcissism dysfunction. That is not a twin flame. 
So I want to I want to suggest that you drop that part of it. All right, let me get to the good stuff. In your chart, I'm a Vedic astrologer, and if you go here to loveastrology.thunderwizard.com, you're going to see that I have some um, astrological charts that I can make up for you because I found this while looking at my chart with my twin flame and I noticed a lot of things in there that explained why we vibed and we were so perfect for each other. Vedic astrology has a bunch of really great things. One of them is if you're with somebody or if you have somebody in mind, like let's say you've met your twin flame and you guys aren't together at the moment, you know who this person is, you have their birth information, get a reading from me because I can tell you whether or not from an astrological perspective, whether or not you guys are aligned. How do I know that? My twin flame and I, um, I've, I've looked up all the, the Vedic astrological um, compatibility uh, things. There are multiple ways to find that, and we ticked every single one of those boxes. So I know exactly what to look for. But there's multiple things you can look for. Are your minds, your emotional bodies, are they able to connect? Are your sexual uh, energies able to connect? You can see that. You can see um, if the relationship will last a long time. What will be the nature of the relationship? What will end the relationship if it's going to come to end? And in reality, in my chart, it says that, you know, I because you can find out the other one is how many soulmates uh, are you going to have? Or more specifically, if you have more than one soulmate, you can find out what they're going to be like and what the relationship will be like and how it will end or how, you know, what will keep it together. As it turns out, she was, I can't remember, I think she was the third significant relationship, and it's in my chart. She was the third deeply significant relationship that happened. And guess what? I didn't know it at the time, but now that I know what to look for, it predicted her death. It's in there. So it, tells, it, it told me how it was going to end. Thankfully, I didn't know anything about that. I didn't see it coming. But... You know, that's how specific you can get. How is the relationship going to be? How will it end? Will it end from fighting? Will it end from, for instance, my marriage, uh, my first marriage? It's in my chart. You can see my first marriage will last a while. We were together for 10 years, but that there will be no love and it will die from a lack of love. And that's exactly what happened. My first major deep relationship which was almost a marriage is in my chart as well and that one if i look back that one says guess what that we would break up because of fighting and that's exactly what happened so you can find out my next one according to my chart is going to be a very emotionally satisfying one and as long as we meditate and, and communicate our feelings it will last perhaps the rest of my life so I'm looking forward to that one. I can find out all this by looking at your chart. So go to loveastrology.thunderwizard.com. Drop this idea that you're all by yourself and that you're half a person and that you're limited. And until that other half comes along and everything's going to be perfect, you got to drop all that stuff. you got to live your life, even if you are a twin flame. If it is your karma that you have multiple soulmates, you have to have those soulmate experiences. And the more that you know about them, how you connect and how you may disconnect, if you know ahead of time, you can get ahead of it and make the most out of those relationships and get you closer to connecting to your twin flame. Okay? All right. So that's it for me. Um, go to loveastrology.thunderwizard.com. Check that out. Go to thunderwizard.com if you want to learn more about the uh, divine masculine and feminine. I'm going to do a whole series on that. S scroll down to the right and subscribe for the divine, uh, the union of uh, whatever I said, divine union of masculine and feminine. If you want to see everything that I have, uh, books, and I'm doing, I'm doing a major, major sale on all of my um, uh, on every single one of my services, almost every single one, uh, up to 75% off. Go to courses.thunderwizard.com. Subscribe and hit the bell button. 
All right, I'll talk to you guys later.